What's up, YouTube? T Movies here. Since she's in the, since um, actress Mary Elizabeth is in the new uh film with Aaron Park called The Parts You Lose, which opens this week, and since she's also in that new uh Will Smith movie Gemini Man, which comes out next week, and not to mention she's also in uh Birds of Prey, which has dropped this trailer and it's out in uh, February. I decide to to go right ahead and do my top ten favorite Mary Elizabeth Winston movies. Now. I gotta say, she's, you know, Mary Elizabeth Wins is like in her, uh, I think, late 30s or early 30s, I think, and she has a pretty oh, interesting yeah. resume. She's done TV work, uh, and that girl could prove that she could do horror, she could do uh, comedy, drama, action. I think this woman is awesome, and not only is she, well, she is incredibly good looking, but I've I've always been a fan of her, you know, ever since, like, uh, right, probably ever since Brian Destination 3, I've always been a fan of her, so... Uh, with that being said, here's my 10 favorite Mary Elizabeth Winston movies. And, you know, funny, uh, her initials, by the way, is uh, M-E-W, which is short for Muse. So, boy, you Pokemon fans, you can probably get that reference. Anyway, uh, alright. Coming in at number 10 is the film All About Nina. Now, this is actually one of her, you know, recent roles. And in it, uh, Winston plays this, uh... This woman named uh, Nina Geld, who is like pretty much this uh, stand-up comedian who's uh, also an alcoholic and all, and she's also trying to escape the uh, pretty much her uh, difficult ex and prepare uh, for like uh, life-changing auditions and all. And so, like, she ends up fleeing to uh, Los Angeles where she meets this uh, guy named Raf Rafi, played by Common, who ends up challenging, pretty much is like uh, challenges almost uh, at like every uh, preconception that she has like. Uh, ever, like, include, include those, like, uh, around her and all, and they end up having, like, uh, a romance with one another. All About Nina, I thought it was a really nice little film. Mary Elizabeth Winston, I thought was terrific in this. Her, like, on-screen romantic chemistry with Common was pretty good. You know, she, she also showed that she could do, uh, stand-up pretty well, and, yeah, she was really great in this. Like, if you guys never really seen, uh, Winston's movie, All About Nina, Give it a go, it's a really just one. And I think there could be a good chance that she could have gotten an Oscar nomination for this, too, because Winston was actually that good in this movie. Alright, coming in at number nine is The Spectacular Now. Now, granted, Winston doesn't really have that big of a part. She mainly plays uh, Miles Teller's character's um, sister, and their brother and sister dynamic chemistry with one another was great. And Spectacular Now, you know, is based on a, a YA novel, uh, directed by uh, James uh, Ponet. Uh, can't, remember, can't really pronounce the last name. Uh, Ponton, Ponticize. Can't remember how to pronounce the last name. But he's a really good director, though. Um, him and Winston have worked together before in another movie. I'm going to mention it later on. But uh, Spectacular Now is a really great one, and. You got also got great performances by Brie Lawson, by Jennifer Chase Lay, uh, Kaya Chandler is in this. It, or not to mention Shaylee Woolley, uh, plays Miles Teller's his love interest. Yeah, it's a really nice uh, rom com. I mean, uh, and mainly uh, Winston's uh, character, like she of course plays uh, Ma, like I say, she played Miles Teller's uh, sister in it, and. She played that role really well, and, and, uh, yeah, if you guys haven't really seen, uh, Spectacular Now yet, it's a really decent one, and it, it was another H24 win, um, that year, so, really good film, anyway. Alright, coming in at number 8 is going to be the prequel to The Dang. Now, I, I gotta say, I quite got kicked out of the remit, the, uh, this Dang prequel more than most people have. Now, this is not really a reboot of the thing, it's more like a, like, like I said, it's more of a prequel and all. And, granted, this movie wasn't as good as the, uh, as the John Carpenter, uh, Kurt Russell one. But, uh, it, it was a pretty good one, and you also had, uh, Joe Egerton was in this. Like, it was really creepy at the time. Uh, when it, it got released in 20, 2011. And it didn't really, like, blew up in the box office, and the critic response wasn't all that great. 
But I still got to kick out uh, Mary Elizabeth Winston's the thing one. And, like, she was, of course, really great in this. Uh, Egerton was great. I'm going to go get my backpack. And, I mean, this is really, like, a body... You know, the thing is a body horror movie, and I do love me some body horror films. And, yeah, if you guys never really seen the Thing prequel, I'll say give it a go. Like, it's not a great movie or anything, but it's not a steamy pile of poor shit that, uh, or anything. That audience and a critics may have All right, coming in at number seven is going to be Live Free or Die Hard. Now, Mary Elizabeth Winston actually plays uh, John McClane's daughter, who ends up getting uh, kidnapped by uh, the main villain in this, played by uh, Timothy Oliphant. And Live Free or Die Hard is a really good one. It's probably maybe like my second favorite out of the sequels. This, this is of course the, uh, yeah, this is the fourth installment of uh, Die Hard, and you even had, uh, not to mention Kevin Smith was also in this, so. Pretty cool. You also had uh, Justin Long here. Really, uh, I mean, it was pretty much like, uh, if you really want to look at it, this was like Die Hard meets Taken. Because it's really John McClane who ends up having to take his daughter who ends up being kidnapped. And, like, I really quite like the uh, daughter and father dynamic chemistry between John McClane and Winston. And not to mention, uh, Winston also reprised her role for the fifth Die Hard movie, which I'm not gonna lie, I gotta kick out of the fifth one. So. Now, coming in at number six, I'm going with the movie Death Proof. Now, Death Proof, it is a really bloody uh, film. And it was, of course, directed by uh, Quinn Tarantino. And it was, like, part of the, uh, the Grindhouse um, and Aji uh, films. And you got uh, you also got Kurt Russell as the uh, stuntman, uh, who is, like, this uh, professional body double who ends up uh, taking these... Uh, Ends up taking these uh, three women um, hostage and all, and one of them is played by uh, by Winston. And you also had uh, one of the other, some of the other girls are played by uh, Zoe Bell, who's of course uh, a great stunt dubber. Death Proof is a, it's probably my favorite out of the uh, Grindhouse uh, trilogies. It is so darn fun. You know, it is very violent. Uh, Kurt Russell as his playing his part is great. And yeah, I mean, and not to mention, uh, Mary Lou's Bruce have played a cheerleader. So, what more can you ask for there? Recording a YouTube video? Can I get in? Live now? Anyway, uh, anywho, uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, Death Proof is such a great one. And if you guys have really seen Death Proof or any of the Grindhouse movies for that matter, definitely give those a go. Okay, coming in at number five is going to be Sky High. Now, Sky High stars uh stars this dude named uh, Michael Anter Anterano. I was I always mispronounce his uh, last name, but he, he's a cool actor there. And he, of course, uh, like um attends this uh, school with four superheroes. And speaking of Kurt Russell, you also had Kurt Russell in this, who plays uh, Michael's um dad here. You also got Kelly Preston. Uh, you got uh, Bruce Campbell as a coach. Uh, you got uh, Linda Carter, um, Dave Foley, uh, Kevin McDonald's in this. And uh, in it, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winston plays the, uh, this character named uh, Gwendolyn uh, Gwen Grayson, uh, aka Roya Payne slash uh, Sue T uh, Tanny. And she's like the senior at, uh, at the Sky High, who, like, uh, Will, of course, ends up, along with uh, everyone else, ends up falling in love with her. And she has some really, uh, she has a pretty cool, uh, you know, superpowers here. And, you know, I guess you could say this was like a Winston's, uh, superhero debut before Birds of Prey got real, before, uh, um, she got cast for Birds of Prey. So, she actually has superhero, uh, experiences. So, there's that. I mean, granted, Sky High's not based on a comic book or anything, but Sky High, I always got kicked out. I mean... I've always liked the uh, cast they've had involved with. 
I always thought the premise was cool. And the movie was pretty decent. Like, it's... It's a really cool part coming of age story, part superhero tale. And it was one of those original superhero films I've seen. And if you guys never really had a chance to check out Sky High by now, it's a really good one. Alright. Now, coming in at number four, this movie actually was... A re- was I've ever mentioned this, but this is actually the movie that actually made me become a fan of Winston. Uh, my number four pick is Final Destination 3. Final Destination 3 is literally the reason why I bet lots of people are scared of roller coasters. Because Final Destination 3 uh, stars, um, you know, stars Mary Elizabeth Winston as a uh, teen uh, who ends up, like, uh, predicting um, people's deaths at a uh, amusement park. Or, yeah. And, um, of course, the uh, deaths end up happening on a, uh, on a roller coaster, and they were some insane deaths, like, and of course, uh, after, um, that, uh, like, after the uh, prediction, lots of, uh, people, like, lots of her, um, the survivors, uh, end up getting killed off one by one, so, yeah, Final Destination 3, it's probably my favorite out of the Final Destination franchise, you know, the first Final Destination, which got released in 2000, uh, which featured, um, an airplane, the original Final Destination is great. Final Destination 2, I always got kicked out of as well, even though I think it's like the weakest out of the franchise. Of course, there was part 4, part 5, they always were great. But the best one has got to be Final Destination 3. It, it is literally really bloody. And I think one of the most, uh, I think probably one of the gruesome uh, scenes is probably the uh, tanning bed scene. Yeah, that will make people not want to go to, a t- to have a tanning bed salon anymore. Uh, there's also, um, of course, there's the gym scene where, uh, the guy's, like, um, where that one dude is, uh, is, like, you know, lifting weights and stuff like that, and, uh, those, like, uh, knives or whatever you want to call, uh, well, I guess you could say that, like, saws or whatever, uh, decides to, like, uh, pretty much, um, take the guy's, uh, head off. Um, of course, there's the horse scene. I mean, Final Destination 3 really does not hold back, and not to mention it's directed by James, uh, Wong. Not Wong, James Wong, W-O-N-G. Now, if you guys don't know, James Wong also directed Dragon Ball Evolution. So, yeah, he went from Final Destination 3 to Dragon Ball Evolution, which, hey, cool, I guess. But, uh, yeah, Final Destination 3, I I always found this movie to be really fun. And it's seriously, after one of the Final Destination movies, this is one I could probably watch over and over. It's, it's a great one. If you guys have ever seen it, Go check it out, and, uh, what's it? It's a pretty good, uh, screen queen as well, so. Alright, coming in at number three is the movie Smash. Now, this, now, uh, this week, um, Mary Elizabeth Winston stars alongside, uh, Aaron Paul in this new movie called The Parts You Lose. But years before that, Winston and Paul have ended up working together once before in a movie called Smash, which is also from the same director of The Spectacular Now. And this is actually, like, I really didn't really watch Breaking Bad much. But this is actually the movie that made me go, yeah, this Aaron Paul dude has acting chops. Like, I, you know, I think Aaron Paul is a great actor. And at times he haven't really shown it outside of Breaking Bad. But his part in the movie Smash was great. And his, like, uh, on-screen romantic chemistry with Winston is terrific. I mean, here you got, uh, Aaron Parr, who plays this, uh, alcoholic, um, married man, who, uh, of course is married to Mary Lou Winston's character, and, uh, Winston ends up trying to, uh, stay clean and all that, and, so, uh, yeah, they're trying to also, uh, she's trying to, uh, get him sober and all that. Smash is, it's a great movie about addiction, um, about relationship. It is a really great movie, and, I'm not gonna lie, I even thought Aaron Parr should have gotten an Oscar nomination for this. Like, he was actually, like, Aaron Paul was actually that, was actually that good in this movie. And if you guys never really seen, um, the Aaron Paul and, uh, Winston movie Smash yet, it's a really good one. Alright, coming in at number two is going to 10 Cloverfield Lane. 10 Cloverfield Lane, it, this is also a movie I think where John Goodman probably should have gotten an Oscar nomination, because John Goodman was fan-freaking-tastic in, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. 
I mean, it is definitely one of the most creepiest roles I've ever seen out of John Goodman. And here he, of course, plays this, like, a uh, guy who ends up rescuing uh, Winston's character uh, after she ends up getting involved in a, a car accident. And he ends up, like, uh, pretty much kidnapping her and uh, holding her against her will. And there's also another guy there, uh, played by John Gallagher Jr., that is also being uh, held hostage. And so Winston has to try to find a way how to get out from there. And there's also, like, creepy stuff that's also going um, around the house. Ten Cloverfield Lane, I mean, it was... One of the coolest markings I've seen, because, you know, before 10 Club for the Lane got released, you know, uh, there was, like, um, uh, the film was actually titled something else, like, I can't remember the actual title for it, but then the trailer ended up, uh, releasing, like, I believe, like, um, two months before the movie got released, then it turned out that was a quote, a follow-up to the original Club film, which, that is one of the best marking moves I've ever seen, and, how on, and why are we getting, uh, how on earth did we go from a good Cloverfield movie to a terrible one with that Netflix one and still be on me, but whatever. But, uh, yeah, Tan Cloverfield Lane, it's a really great one. It's creepy. Uh, Winston, I thought she really played her part well. And, yeah, if you guys never really seen Tan Cloverfield Lane by now, go give it a go. It's, it's a really creepy one. All right, now her best work of all time is obviously Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Now, uh, Scott Pilgrim uh, is directed by uh, Edgar Wright, who of course gave us uh, stuff stuff like Shaun the Dead. Uh, um, oh yeah, uh, Baby Driver. Great, great director. I love Edgar Wright. And this is probably one of my favorite films of his. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, where uh, Michael Sarah plays this like a uh, rocker, um, this, like, struggling, like, yeah, this rocker, I guess you could say, uh, who ends up falling, this, uh, falling in love with this uh, woman named uh, Ramona Flyers. But the thing is, uh, he, uh, in order for him to uh, be with her, he has to take down her uh, seven evil exes, one of which is played by Chris Evans, and the other one is played by, uh, the other ex is played by uh, Jason Schwartzman. I mean, yeah, he has to take down lots of uh, exes in us. And Scott Pilgrim is... Right, and I always like Mary Elizabeth Winston's character. You know, she had she had some really cool uh, blue hair in this, and her like I really liked her uh, part with uh, you know with uh, Michael Sarah. You also had uh, Brie Lawson who actually uh, played Michael Sarah's uh, ex in this. So now she has to take down uh, Michael Sarah's um, ex. I always find that to be pretty cool. Brie Lawson was great in this show. I mean, kind of funny like how. Um, Three years later, after uh, this thing, uh, Lawson and Winston ended up being in, uh, in Spectacular Now together. Always found that to be funny. But, uh, yes, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World such a great one. I mean, it's also a cool premise. You know, a guy has to take down a uh, girl's seven evil exes. I mean, would anyone actually ever do that? Like, seriously. But, uh, and how on earth we... Like, the movie is literally going to be 10 years old next year, and we still have never gotten a sequel or whatever. I mean, I kind of wish we got, like, another follow-up, because I, I freaking love Scott Pilgrim. And if you guys never really had a chance to see Scott Pilgrim vs. the World yet, go give it a go. It's definitely Edgar Wright at his best. So, anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick rundown. Uh, 10, All About Nina. 9, The Spectacular Now. 8. The Thing. 7. Live Free or Die Hard. 6. Death Proof. 5. Sky High. Uh, 4. Final Destination 3. Uh, 3. Smash. 2. 10. Cloverfield Lane. 1. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Now, she's been loads of other stuff over the years as well. Let me pull her credit list. Cannot wait to see her in Birds of Prey by the Lake. Kinda sucks that they didn't give her any lines in the trailer, but... Uh, she was also in, uh... <laughs> Oh, she was also in that terrible Vampire Hunter movie, uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. That's probably her worst movie, in my opinion. Uh, she was in that really weird but good movie, uh, Swiss Army Man. Uh, let's see. She was in uh, Alice of Vincent, uh, Venice, I should say. Uh, she was in The Hollers. Uh, she was in that not-so-good Jeremy Renner movie, Kill the Messenger. Uh, she was in uh, Black Christmas. Uh, she was also in that horrible Ring uh, sequel. She was in the movie Faults. 
uh, uh, Factory Girl with uh, Sienna Miller. That was really great. Uh, she was also in um, the movie Bobby. Yeah, she's been in some really great stuff. I, I've, I've always adored Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winston. And, oh, I, oh, now she mentioned she, uh, on her TV crash, she was also on Fargo, too. So, so uh, yeah, she, she, she's always been great. So, anyway, uh, let me leave you guys. What are some of your favorite Mary Elizabeth Winston movies? Uh, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is Team Movies signing off.